So this is the fogged runes. Good. You should listen to him on Trindamere because, quite frankly, I don't jack shit about the runes on Trindamere. And I think Fog's been doing really well with the Flash Ghost style. Um, I'll see how you play. I'm down to chill early for a little bit only for a little bit though I probably spin on to him there to be honest I see no reason not to um, what's he going to do? Probably what I would do here is you're not like all in, you don't have to all in or anything. Um, but what I'm trying to see is if I can get him to miss his, uh, his flip. So let's say, for example, for your spin to be up. That was back further, sorry. Hold up. Right here, I'm probably going to spin and then try to dodge the, the flip and then and basically just kind of test his competency on this part right here. So you E3, especially once he kind of like gets in your face right there. You're doing two things. You're going to clear this minion. Range creeps aren't that significant in this spot, in my opinion. You've got full fury built. Um, so what I'm thinking is E forward. And then you're going to do, you're going to basically just kind of preemptively move to the side and just kind of test him. Now, if he misses his flip then you can continue the trade with ghost and then you've got him you know you've basically got him uh in a really shitty spot right if he flips you and then you play it out it's still not that bad because the wave will still be on your side and you can just kind of pull back and then wait for olaf to come up and get you a kill i think it's a i think it's a really good spot to pressure and i don't see any sort of downside here because I, I just don't think you're ever dying you know what I mean like even if you just even if he's fucking soul reads us and like flips us as soon as we spin in <clears throat> it's not like he's just going to fucking it's not like he's just gonna one shot us um and it's certainly not like the end of the world like I'm saying you know So definitely look to loosen up. I know Urgot's a little intimidating, but Urgot and Yorick and Alawi all kind of fall in the same space where if you wiggle around their cooldowns, then you're good to go. You know what I mean? So like right there, I definitely, this is a hundred percent. I would have, I would have challenged here, you know? There, I'm, uh, I'm literally gonna, I'm gonna W and just go. I'm gonna pop Ghost and go. There, 100%. This is why we take Ghost. So, I'll show you right here. There, at, I mean, dude, you, you literally can't get a better spot than this. Um... I mean, the only way this could be better is if he had dat into if he had jumped into fucking tower range. I would literally ghost and just start fucking whacking away and just sidestepping. Uh, this is just this is too juicy of a spot. You know, this is actually a pretty good uh, point to discuss. 
a lot of people talk about, well, how can I carry? How can I carry? How can I carry? Low elo, you know, I don't, I don't understand. Blah blah blah. I think a lot of League of Legends is just identifying people making mistakes and being able to take advantage of those mistakes. So for a lot of people, um, you may have great mechanics, but in this case, I've seen at least two moments where you could have challenged this guy um, and see, you know, the first one was more of a probe to see if he makes a mistake. And now this one, he's actually clearly made an error in the lane and using and basically the way Tryndamere works in these like, and these types of matchups is, I, I say these types of matchups, any matchup with like a, a gap close, um, Jax, uh, Fiora, uh, fucking Riven, all that shit. Generally how it goes as a good rule of thumb is the first person to engage badly loses. Like the first person to like make a dumb like force it's normally just checkmate from there on out. Um, Riven's like a classic example in my mind. A Riven and Trinomere, Trinomere should never really be killing Riven and Riven should never be killing Trinomere. Riven should be behind Trinomere in CS and then should catch up and pass Trinomere in the late game. Most Rivens don't do that because they always try to trade into me and then I just W and run them down. This would be a perfect example. The Urgot uses his E forward, um, uses his E forward right in front of tower range. Urgot's already not a great matchup uh, to play into Tryndamere just because like you're very immobile and the main thing you need to understand why this is a counter matchup in Tryndamere, why Tryndamere counters Alawis, Yorix, all those champions that actually bully really fucking hard is because at level 6, their damage doesn't matter, right? A lot of their their threat comes from the fact that if, they, if you jump on them, it's going to fucking hurt a lot. So you've got to be really succinct and like efficient about the times you go in. And most champions just, most players just don't know how to manage their champions well, right? It's why if you watch someone play fucking Gangplank, for example, into those matchups, they generally feed, right? Trinomir, the reason it works is because with Trinomir, you can just kind of go. And if they decide to ha have a, a last stand with you, Trinomir loves it. Because he just gets so much value out of the fact that he's invulnerable th throughout the duration of the fight. All that damage means jack shit. That's why Tryndamere hates champions that CC kite well. H hates them. Right? And then you've got someone like Nasus who's like a hard counter. And you don't really ever get to fight him except for pre-6 maybe. So, this is a missed opportunity. And it looks like you kind of go in, but like, dude, this should have been a this should have been a ghost and and fucking commit. I, I mean, I don't give a fuck. I will sit in that wave and whack away until the last minute if I have to, because like I said before, even if it's close, you can just leave, and then the wave is still on your side, and you can decide what you want to do. Maybe maybe uh, Olaf comes up, and you you'll have more sustain than he will. I see no reason. So here's another mistake that you've made in this replay. Here, you just freeze. We see Urgot when we come back to lane, right? Don't put, look, we still see him. So why are you pushing? Whatever, he gets scuttle. Whoopie fucking do. Right? We can't stop him anyways. And pushing isn't gonna, you know what I'm saying? Pushing isn't gonna do anything. You don't need to back yet. You're fine. Hold this freeze for a little while and see what he does. We could have potentially gotten a teleport out of him or something. Um, we would have had XP lead for a while. But he, now he's just going to teleport and block. See what I mean? 
We basically just we just hand delivered him a wave. We, we didn't need to. We could have just chilled. He's not gonna buy anything that's gonna just crush us in lane anyways. We're still fine. I would have I would have definitely just froze for a while to see what's happening. Is this Fog's build? Or is this some shit you're making up on your own? I haven't I haven't watched Fog in a while. I don't know what he's building. Why are we going pickaxe first? It seems strange to me. Is it? Okay, I'll just I'll trust you on this. Because I really I haven't watched him play, yeah. You're too scared of this this matchup. Ghost. I think we can take advantage of it a little sooner, but I'm okay with this. Now let's see what you do with it. Well, we know he doesn't have TP. So you shove in. Uh, I'm diving him there. I'm diving him with full fury and ult. He doesn't have flash. I guess it's fine. It's it's not... Actually, you don't have to dive him. You can freeze. Let's see what you do. You don't have to dive him. Diving doesn't really do much. I, I don't like how you just started smacking the creeps, though. Like, if you want... If you want, you can just freeze. To be honest. There's no real... When I look at the game, the game is not in some like dire straits or anything. And maybe it is. Maybe it is worth diving. Because actually, now that I look at it, it is kind of sketch. Both Ziggs and bot lane are pretty behind. So yeah, maybe you do have to just fucking man mode this dude. Freezing's an option too. There's nothing wrong with strangling top lane and making him just useless, basically. So you could do that as well. And just perma-hold the freeze on your side. Looks like that's kind of what you're doing here. Maybe not to the degree that I would have, but... Then you decide to build a wave and dive. Oh, yes, yeah, and that's easy. I hate how you play it, though. Let's talk about mechanics. People think that Trinomir doesn't take mechanics. He actually takes a lot of little micro adjustments. So we go back. Right here. I will calmly W. So you would W and then you would just fucking auto attack. And then you would hold your E. Keeping all of your summoners unless you absolutely have to use them to finish this dive off. I don't think you do. I'm pretty sure you can just auto him to death. It's about efficiency. You're you're literally look at how you step you step all the way off. I don't know why. Tower tower is aggro to cannon creep. There's nothing to be afraid of. He just he just eat in your face. So W on his head. And just walk up. Look, look how you spin forward. You shouldn't even be back that far anyways, but you still could have just walked up. He has nothing, right? He has no flash. He has no movement with his with a lack of E, right? So you can just walk up. Now you're wasting ghost. You didn't need any of that shit. And you waste all because of it? Yeah. 
That's that in terms of a dive. That's I mean it's successful in that you killed him, but you could have kept all of your summoners, hundred percent, every single one, and your ult. And then that means you could dive the next moron that's stupid enough to come up to your tower. And that's how you would snowball this game. Like, really hard. Look, you can't even push off of it. That's terrible. We couldn't even get a plate off of that dive. But I have Essence Reaver. Mikmas, thanks so much. Yes. Oh, you don't have your ult. That's right. Yeah, you shouldn't be spinning on him without ult up. That's my bad. You shouldn't be going for... Like, right now, since we wasted our ult, right? And we wasted our ghost. Now we're kind of trash, right? But check this out. If we had our ult here, and we have our ghost here... We could 2v1 this. I promise you. We could straight 2v1. Right now. Starting with the Udyr, because the Udyr is gonna be squishy as fuck. Always jungle first, by the way. When you're getting when you're getting uh when you're doing for two V1s, always try to pop the jungler first, especially when you're running ghost. But look at how this all builds up. Right? See that dive. Average Trinomir player looks at that dive and says, Well, I pulled off the dive. Fuck, I, I did it, right? I killed a guy. Sweet. But to me, I'm sitting here thinking, well, this isn't we're not getting the, the maximum that we could get, right? It's min-maxing. When I get the maximum that we could get, we could get this guy without using anything. Come right back with our power spike, and then we could just full send on this 2v1, starting with the Udyr, and then the Urgot. 2v1, the top lane, bam. All of a sudden now, game's pretty much over, right? The enemy team's tilted as fuck. You're huge. You knock down a bunch of plates, too, on top of it. Now we're playing a different game. Instead, we take a scenario that could get basically leverage into a 2v1, and now we're sitting here burning our flash just to run away. And there it is, right? That's very close. It's a very close 2v1, and you almost get it. Why are we playing so far back, dude? I want you to see what's going on in the map. Splitbush champions push the boundaries of the map depending on what they see. So, for example, I see Udyr and Ziggs towards bot side. I, I am fucking walking up to this tower and just full sending this guy with Ghost and all inning him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going ham. Hell, I'm pinging Vagar to come with me so we can get this tower down. Look at where you're standing. Why are you standing so far back, dude? Where are you going? Why is he able to do this two levels behind? Why is he even able to get near? You could just go up and smack the tower. I'm using your vision too. It's not like I can see everything. Look at him. He's just sitting there tanking. You're just letting him tank it. Right in front of you. You can see Udyr. Peaceful Trindamir, dude. Gentle Trindamir. Why? What? 
Can I kill him right now? I mean, maybe. We're not going to know standing behind the fucking wave. And even if we can't, we could just, if you're scared that you can't kill him, then just walk up and hit the tower and dance around. and spit. Like, you're just drawing no pressure at all. What the fuck? Hmm. Yes, <laughs> a valid question, though. <laughs> yeah. Why are we running the bottom? Shit's whack. So, my biggest grievance in this replay is the fact that you constantly never, ever try to poke at somebody on your own. You're completely reliant on the jungle helping you, and you have you seemingly have no concept of, like, I am massively ahead, and I should be trying to challenge and poke at people. Like, you're, you keep letting this Urgot just freeze the lane right in front of your, in front of towers and shit for some reason. I don't know why he's allowed to do that. He's not allowed to do that. If it's me, I'm literally just going, I'm pushing this into tower. I will hit the tower a couple times in his face, try to juke his E, and then see if I can dive him with ghosts. And if it's close, then maybe I'll spin out. If not, then I kill him, and then I take his tower. But you're not, you're not pushing the boundaries. Like, you're, you're just kind of, like, coexisting. Okay? You, just because, like, just because you start a dive or start poking at somebody doesn't necessarily mean... Doesn't necessarily mean that like if I start a attacking somebody under their tower, that doesn't mean that you have to commit to it. Just like if you go and push at this guy, it doesn't mean that you have to go and hit the tower. And if you hit the tower a couple times, it doesn't mean you have to hit the tower until the tower dies. You can just poke and, and harass and see what kind of mistakes that are being made. Notice every time this guy has missed his flip, I've told you to play aggro, right? Well, how many times have you even made him miss his flip? Like, never. You never did. The only time that I saw him miss a flip is because he was brain dead and you were walking around in front. You walked in a straight line and he whiffed it because he's an idiot. But you yourself didn't make him do it. If you watch, if you watch, if you watch me play like Trinomir or whatever, right? If you watch me play something like Gangplank or, or TF, whatever the fuck I'm playing, right? You'll notice that once I feel confident about a matchup or I feel that I'm ahead or if I'm fighting a support or something, you'll notice that I intentionally walk at them with the intent of moving to the side, right? So if they, if they respond and they miss something, then I go, okay, I'm in. And if they hit it, I go, okay, I'm out. Not a big deal, right? But what you're doing is you're literally like, hello, Mr. Ergot. And Urgot's like, hee hee. And you're like, hello, I'm your peaceful Trinomir. And it's like, would you like to coexist with me? And you're just like, here? And he's just like, yes, I would. And then you're like, okay, cool, let's just stand. Let's just fucking just chill right here together and stare at each other. And I'll let you hold the lane right here, and I'll stand here. And then even though I'm like two levels ahead of you and playing a split push champion, I will let you nullify my split push potential and leave the lane for you. So that the enemy team doesn't have anything to worry about. They don't have to worry about me hitting towers. 
And I'm just gonna go to wherever pressure is drawn on the rest rest of the map. So uh, oh by the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and just uh I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna let you farm back up. And basically, since you lost your lane, I'm just gonna let you get back into lane without actually pressuring anything. I'm not gonna test your tower. I'm not gonna test your ability to play from a disadvantage. I'm not gonna try to draw jungle pressure. I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna go for a peaceful walk. I'm going down to uh, the nature reserve down here, and I'm gonna hang out with my homies down this way. You just farm up, and he's like, "Thanks, sweet, appreciate it, dude." And you're like, "No problem, ma'am." I'm a big fan of not winning games with leads. And oh, by the way, by the way, I'm such a passive player. I'm not going to look for a flank. Nah, no, I'm not going to flank these guys. No, instead, what I think the play is, I think the play is to swing all the way behind them. Or swing all the way in front of them so that... They know that I don't know whether or not I'm ahead. Right? Like, I, I don't want the enemy team to, like, feel like I'm ahead. I would rather just path all the way around. Look at this. I have a question for you. It's a geometry question. If you're fed... And you're going to try to collapse on people. Do you think that they are going to run this way? Or this way? This is not the way that we, that we collapse down. If he wants to run down here, cool. Go this way. Block. Block a disengage. Block an egress. They're, they can't stay in. They're dead. There's not a single person that can fight you, and you need to know that. You came up with a way to waste all your summoners again. Backing there's fine, in my opinion. No one's holding tower. And Ergot's dead. So why are we not hitting tower? Who can fight you? Ziggs is here. Who can kill you right now? No one is the answer. Not a soul. Not to mention the fact they all use summoners down on bot lane. So you know they can't flash for you. Trindomir mains, please. Let's go back to when that wave crashed the tower. You didn't even, like, fake it. You didn't even, like, smack the tower a couple times and back up and see. You just fucking pieced. You didn't even float. You could have hit the tower and then spun to here and just danced for a second and see what they do. You just left. Outright left. And then you did your nature reserve walk again. Wow. We just walked from top to base and didn't do anything. And then we entered down mid. Dude, you've played too much Trinomir for this shit. This is garbage, man. I'm sorry. This is garbage. I'm gonna tell you the same thing that I told the Yorick guy. Your job is to knock down towers. Here, with Yorick, you know what it is? You go, you break tower, you grab rift, 
You push in, you try to knock down an inhib with Maiden and, and Riff. With Trindomir, this, you went, you went tower, and then you didn't pressure this. You like kind of waddled around. You, did, you let this guy freeze in front of you a bunch of times. And then you just kept you just kept leaving top. Like that's not what we do. That's not what we do, man. You play Trindomir all day. I am being nice, Purple Death. I'm telling you exactly what you need to hear. He's playing. Here's the facts. All right. Here's the facts. Dude's played 312 games of Trindomir. He's been playing for at least four seasons, maybe more. He's still only playing in gold with this champion, which is pretty much like if you spam it and you practice it, it's pretty easy to get up past gold. He's making the same mistakes over and over again. Just forever. Perpetually making the same errors. Someone has to come up and be like, dude, this shit is whack. And it is. Trindomir is not, in my opinion, you play Trindomir, you play Trindomir to climb, right? You play Trindomir to split push and climb. This champion isn't fucking Leona. Where we can just like shrug our shoulders and be like, mm, team's not very good. In this instance here, our team was perfectly fine. Perfectly carryable game. Or at the very least, we could have played this game out beyond. If people aren't going to take it well, then they don't have to pay for coaching. That's pretty simple. Everyone knows what my coaching is. It's not like some nebulous, weird, mysterious thing. So, if we're not pushing side lanes... If we're not knocking down this tier two and then swinging the bot lane and taking tier twos, we're fucking up. We're playing it wrong. And then bingo, bango, bongo. We fucking climb. <clears throat> the other thing that I would say based on this replay is you need to actually poke at people. Feel out matchups. Say to yourself, okay, how do I win this matchup? And so in the case of Urgot, you say, all right, well, if he misses his E, that's what I'm going to base my entire all-in around. Can I get him to miss his E? Uh, with Teemo, can I land a W on Teemo and keep my health up? If I can keep my health up and land a W on Teemo, I'm good to all-in. Uh, let me think of other examples. Um, Riven. If Riven jumps to me with her cooldowns like if she uses e and then q to get all the way to me and i can land a w on her then i will all in even if i'm low on hp because she has no cooldowns it's all dependent on poking out and feeling out those matchups though right every single matchup you have to kind of you have to you have to see how you win it and go for it and then once you're a level or two levels ahead you need to actually get up on a tower and save your E, walk up, hit the tower a couple times, and then E away and see what your opponent does. Or walk up and, and, and challenge your opponent to make a mistake. Classic example, if we go back. I'm going to try to find a good example. Right there, was a, this was a perfect spot. I mean, it's one of many. Dude, I could literally just go through your replay and find tons of examples of you just not doing anything. Like, nothing. Two levels ahead. Okay. Here's Ergot. Okay, he turns his back to you. That's a W. Then what? Is he going to E, right? He's going to E away. It's a 16-second cooldown. How long is your E? Seven seconds. Fucking trade it. And see what he does. I would, I would E him and probably see if I can dive him out right right now. Smack him a couple times. Trade some health. Who gives a fuck? But you're just not, you're not pressuring. W. He's slowed. You spin and E. What's he going to do? You're going to hit him with E and you're going to E auto attack. And then he is going to E that way 
And then you back up and push the wave. Now you've got him lower HP. You see what I'm saying? Like, you need to take little... The game is about taking little advantages and accumulating them over and over again. Once you get advantages, and once you get bigger and bigger and bigger, you can start to take a little bit more risk. You can do things a little bit more uh, aggressive. That's why when the lane starts, we're just kind of chilling, waiting for someone to make a huge mistake. As we get bigger, that's where you start opening up opportunities like, oh, now I can just pressure the tower. I can trade some HP because I have that much more than him. So I could just spin on his head. What's he going to do? Is he going to all in me? No. I'm just going to spin on him, auto attack. He's going to run away. And then I'm going to reset and build a wave and dive him. And if the jungler's here, I might fight them both or I might leave. But if you're not drawing any pressure of your own, this is how we get in these situations. Where now, look, this was because of this failed dive earlier, right? Anyways. Dude. Back to the basics. Keep your ass in top lane. Learn how to pressure. And don't just fucking suicide on the tower either. Learn that there's a that, that nothing is black and white, okay? Sometimes it's okay to walk up and hit the tower once or twice and then spin away. Sometimes it's okay to just full send a dive because you know that people are missing. Sometimes it's okay to just back away from a gank. But if you're not actually pushing up and applying pressure, you're never going to know what those solutions are. All right, cool. Hope this helps. Wrong slide. There we go. Cool, YouTube. Thanks so much for watching the coaching. Hope it helps you. Yada, yada. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Twitch.tv slash least. If you like to be coached, uh, be more than happy to help. And yeah, I'm out. Peace. Crack. It's got to go.